Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host as always, Captain Ron, and today we are taking a classic sandwich, the Cuban sandwich, and we're putting our own Fogo twist on it. We're gonna kick it up a notch or eight. That's right, we're not using pork. Can you guess what we're using? We cooked in the Visit Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival last week, and we took third place overall. What we did is we made Cuban sandwiches, but we used brisket instead. It was amazing. I wanted to cook something beef, and I wanted to do something traditional to South Florida. So we took the two and combined them, and I gotta tell you, it is mouthwatering. So I got this beautiful brisket point, actually. We're not gonna use the whole brisket. We're just using a brisket point, and we're gonna make Cuban sandwiches out of this. Now, there's a couple steps in this process. Let me show you how to get started so that we can do it the right way. As I said, we're gonna use a brisket point. The point to me has the most flavor because it's the fattiest part of the brisket, as you can plainly see. But along with that comes this beautiful marbling. All that internal fat is gonna render and make it super tender. We wanna trim away any hard fat first. This is the fat that won't render at all. Trim that fat cap down to about a quarter of an inch. Now the thinner end gets a quick trim and rounding. The really thin part we cut off would just overcook and dry out. There, now that's a good thickness. Now on this top side, trim away all the silver skin and the excess fat. We wanna see the meat. Get rid of any flaps or loose pieces too. We want our brisket to be aerodynamic. When it's aerodynamic, the smoke's gonna roll over it, and it's gonna cook more evenly, cook perfectly, and absolutely build beautiful flavor. All right, and there, we are done trimming. That looks beautiful. Our next step here is we're gonna put it in a bag and marinate it overnight. A lot of places you can find brine bags, you can find them around the holidays, but the problem is most of the times of the year, they don't have them. So what I like to do, they make these oven bags. They work great for marinating, great. And I find if I put it in a container and then cover it marinade, it takes so much marinade. So this is really a great way to just do it and have it covered all together. And now we got our bag. All we do is we take our giant piece of beautifully trimmed brisket, who trimmed this thing? Some pro, some expert, some meat trimming master, I guess, okay? So this is what we used for the Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival, so we're gonna use it again here today. Oh, oh, I'm just kidding. All that I do from here, okay, is I take it, I get all the air out of it. Get as much air as you can, Kind of push it down till the milk till it starts coming out just like that. All right, squeeze it tight and turn it. All right, so we want to get as much of that meat covered with the marinade as possible. So all you do is you do it like that. I give it one quick tie, and you know what time it is. To the refrigerator! Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to day two of our brisket Cuban sandwich cook. So our next step, we're getting ready to season this, but. Before we do that, I wanna go ahead and light the grill. This way it's getting to temperature while we season up our meats. I'm so excited to get to this. So let's head over to the Big Green Egg and get this sucker lit, shall we? Before we get into it, people are always asking me what our different bags of charcoal for. So I'm gonna tell you right now, our gold bag, Super Premium, is monster chunks of charcoal. So we're gonna use this for our low and slow cook. So we're cooking brisket, low and slow. Therefore, this is the perfect bag to use for this. Now watch this. Oh, see that? It really does happen, folks. It's not voodoo. You can open it with the string. As always, I'll use two of our all-natural Fogo fire starters along with a blaze ball. I just drop two fire starters in, turn the top, and click the blaze ball closed, and it's ready for the grill. A quick hit with the grill torch, and we have created fire. Oh, oh, oh. And now the charcoal. Fill her up. Now, while our charcoal is heating up, we're gonna put this in here, let this heat up with the grill. Now, you'll notice I did one thing. I put the blazer ball with the starters underneath the charcoal. You know why? Because in a big green egg like this, the air comes in from the bottom vents and goes up. So, by putting it below the charcoal, guess what's happening? You're putting the air right to the fire. So, it makes for a much more efficient and clean burning fire. So, here's your little pro tip for the day. It's time to take our brisket out of our marinade and see what we've got. Ooh, wow, that thing really changed color. Nice. So what we have here now is this beautifully moho marinated brisket point, and it is absolutely beautiful. Now, all we gotta do, grab yourself a couple of paper towels and just plot it dry. That's all you gotta do, blot, 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 blot it dry. We just wanna take any of the excess moisture off of here because we're gonna season this thing now. For seasoning, I have two different moho rubs. The first is very fine, so I give a good dusting with this one. Hit the top, the bottom, and always make sure you're coating the sides too for maximum flavor to you. Now, what I'm gonna back it up with is one that's got a little bit more grit to it. It's got a little more texture to it, all right? So, I'm gonna coat it again with this one. We're doing the same thing here. Cover the top, bottom, and sides. Leave no brisket unseasoned. Now, you notice we're right at 250 degrees? Perfect. So now we're gonna monitor our temperatures using our meter thermometer. I'm gonna put it in right into this little line here. Make sure that the tip is right in the middle. 
just like that. Okay, it's gonna give us a perfect temperature reading. Now, on to the egg. There we go. This is the simple part. Okay, simply lay it on there. It's gonna kind of push it together there so it's a uniform size. And there we go, we're gonna let her sleep for about the next five hours. All right, so it's been cooking for about five hours now. Oh my God, look how beautiful that is. Look at that beautiful bark. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Everything I was hoping it would be. Everything I was hoping. So, oh, and it's even flexed. Look at that. Jeez, we're gonna wrap it, but we're gonna head over to the cutting board right now and do some more work. The next step is simple. We're following along any normal brisket cook. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this, but I'm not using paper, all right? Why? Good question. Because I want this to kind of steam itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our brisket point here, all right, stick it on the foil. But before we do that, I'm going to take the marinade and add a little more marinade. I want this thing to steam. We want this thing basically falling apart at the end, okay? So I might even cook a little bit past 203. So all we're gonna do is just put a little bit of marinade, this is the mojo, into the foil, or a little across the top, not a lot. We don't wanna saturate it. Just a little bit, all right? Pull our meter out. Woo, that's hot. And now we simply wrap it, just like we would wrap any other brisket. Okay, and then we've got a beautifully wrapped brisket, like a present. Here, a present for you. Ah, no, let's go back to the big green egg and put it back on. Now this part's real simple. All we have to do, open her up, put her back in, and shut her back down. All right, look, the brisket's ready, folks. Hey, why is Ron putting it in the pan? Because just like any other brisket cook, we have to rest it. We'll leave this in here for at least one hour. How long? That's right, one hour, you got that right. I hollowed out one side of the loaf so there's not so much bread. First up, yellow mustard. Give a good squeeze. Next, Swiss cheese and jamon. That's Cuban for ham. Lastly, a layer of dill pickle chips. Oh my God, look at that. Is that a beautiful thing or what? Look at those juices down in here. Look at the, oh yeah, oh my God, is that tender? I can stick my finger right through it. Yeehaw! As you can see, this beauty turned out perfectly. Gorgeous slices of mojo beef. Makes me want to dig right in. Bend test, check. Now, let's chop. I loaded up one side, put the two together. Now, back to the grill. Oh boy, we're ready here. Now, this thing is real hot. We just want to make sure. You can always test it, throw some water on it. When it disappears almost instantly, it's hot enough. So we got to kind of work quickly here. Then take some melted butter, just paint it on here. And put our sandwich right down onto the butter, just like that. Paint the top. And then we press it, okay? Push it down, squash that thing. Squash it, I tell you, squash, there's an R in there. Squash. And it only takes about a minute. We don't want it to burn. That's not what we want, not what we're going for. Let's flip her over. She should be ready. Oh yeah, look at that. That is perfect, golden brown. That's what we're looking for. We want that nice crunchy sound. Again, about a minute or so. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Ooh, yeah, crunchy. It's getting a little well done there. I'm gonna pull this off right now. There we go. Now, there's only one thing left to do, but we're gonna cut it right in half. My God, that crunch that that bread gets, it's amazing. Let's see. Ooh, look how pretty. Layers of delicious flavor. All right, now that is a thing of beauty. The cheese melted, the everything is crunch, the, the bread is crunchy as can be. There's only really one thing that we have left to do, and I wish that I could help you with this, and I wish I could share this with you, but uh. Wow. Oh my goodness. You know what? I don't think I'm ever making Cuban sandwiches with pork again. That is so good. The, the, so if you're not familiar with what mojo is, it's a citrusy based marinade, and it is just so good. I can't believe how well it pairs with brisket. I think if they would have done this before they made the sandwiches with pork, this might be a Cuban sandwich right here. It is just so good. The way that that brisket chopped up and that little bit of extra marinade we put on there, absolutely fantastic. All right, before we go any further, let's announce the big winner from last week. Here we go, it is at smalley 78 smalley 78 you are our big winner from last week's uh, contest, so just let us know who you are and we'll get your products right out to you. Congratulations.
Folks, listen, while I got you here, please remember, if you like what you saw here today, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. All right, we got lots of good stuff going on. We have a big year ahead of us and there's lots of cool things coming. We've had giveaways for the last two weeks. Did you know that? And please leave us a comment down below. Have you ever had a Cuban sandwich? Do you think a brisket Cuban sandwich makes sense? We'd love to hear from you, okay? And that's everything I got this week. Remember, get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron, out.